What the hell is happening? Die, you son of a... Oh, no! Let's talk about it! Ah! Hi, I'm Andy. Welcome to Screenfire. I hope you enjoyed our live action intro. We tried to capture the cheesy spirit of House of the Dead and I think we succeeded. There are only two ways to make a film out of this either embrace the trash or make a pretty dark horror movie. But nah, we rather embrace the trash. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe at the end of the video if you want to see more. And if you are one of our German viewers, check out the link in the description of the video. You can watch our House of the Dead remake review in German as well. The House of the Dead is one of my favorite light gun rail shooters of the 90s especially the sequel, but of course we focus on the remake. And even though it's not really important, there's also a story to discover. Biochemist Dr. Kyrian is obsessed with his little experiments that push the boundary between life and death. Of course, everything goes wrong and we are the one who's being called to save the day. Our fiancé Sophie Richard calls us into the Kyrian mansion in Europe and we have to shoot a lot of zombies and other creatures. To be honest, I never gave a shit about the story and it's so ridiculous, you really can't take it seriously and at no moment it's meant to be. The gameplay is pretty straightforward and exactly what you would expect from a rail shooter. You're stuck with a fixed camera and can't move your character. You're only supposed to shoot what's in front of you. If you want to save an innocent civilian, shoot the bad guys. If you want to use the elevator, shoot the button. If you want to take a different way, shoot the trapdoor or other things that are breakable. The quicker you can shoot, the more points you get and those are important. As expected, rail shooters are from a different era and really hard. I mean, not Souls-like hard, but still hard. You can trade your precious points for continues and finish the game, even if you really suck and get hit all the time, just like me. The campaign has four chapters and is pretty short. After every chapter, there is a boss with a weak spot you have to defeat. You can finish the game in, I don't know, under one hour. But just like any rail shooter, it isn't about the story. It's about getting better, scoring more points, discovering different ways and secrets, and of course, save as many civilians as you can. You can play the story mode in single player, local co-op or competitive mode. And there's also a hard mode. There's no nice way to say it, but the graphics are really bad for a game that came out in 2022. Of course, it's prettier than the original, but it still looks dated, which could be a good thing if you want to see it through the eyes of nostalgia. And to be honest, it really didn't bother me that much, but I also don't get why it couldn't look better than what we got. I mean, even the Nintendo Switch could handle more than that. You can even choose between a performance mode for higher frame rates, up to 60 frames a second, and a graphic mode for better visuals that aren't really better. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. The graphics aren't the worst thing that happened to the House of the Dead remake. Let's talk about the controls. You can use the analog controls or the gyroscope on the Switch Joy-Con or Pro Controller. I remember back on the Dreamcast you could also play the House of the Dead 2 with the controller and it worked as good as you could imagine. It's a light gun shooter. Light gun. <laughs> If you play it with the analog stick, you can't avoid to get hit several times because it takes ages to get the crosshair on the other side of the screen where you need to shoot the next enemy. And even though the Joy-Con comes a little bit closer to the classic light gun feeling, it's still miles away. It loses its tracking and just doesn't feel right. It even got to the point where I was frustrated because there is no other option. Or is there? Well. Light guns are a thing of the past, unfortunately. This has to do with technical reasons. 
Light guns don't work on modern TVs, only with old CRT TVs. But, but, there is a technical solution to this. The Sinden light gun. What is the Sinden light gun, you ask? It's a light gun developed by Andy Sinden. It adds a thin white border on the screen and the camera inside calculates where you are pointing at over 50 times a second and provides a complete end-to-end -end calculation in less than 20 milliseconds. Unfortunately, as you would imagine, the Nintendo Switch does not support the Sinden light gun. But why would a developer choose the Switch as an exclusive platform for a light gun shooter anyway? I know there are rumors that there will be a version for other platforms as well, but even if it gets released on PlayStation and Xbox, I doubt that they'll support the Sinton light gun. Why they didn't think about that during development is beyond my understanding. That's just like, I don't know, building a car in a world where tires are only available from one manufacturer, but you choose a different one because you hate your customers. I don't know. And that's a shame because the feeling is still great. I can see the potential. I could imagine to play House of the Dead remake with my friends at our next Halloween party and have lots and lots of fun with it. But nope. I guess we'll play Mario Kart and destroy our friendship rather than saving the world from zombies. What they really nailed was the voiceover and the soundtrack. Unfortunately, you can't choose between the classic and new music, but the new tracks are fitting and gave me the necessary arcade feeling. The voice acting is as wooden as you can imagine and it's brilliant. It's this fine line between cringeworthy and charming. Perfectly done. Another plus is the price. It's not a $70 or Euro AAA game. It's available for $24.99 and if you wait a few weeks, I'm pretty sure you can get it for, I don't know, under 20 bucks. All in all, it's a nice remake for a reasonable price and if there wasn't a light gun issue, I would give it a much higher rating. Co-op is fun as usual, but without light gun support, I give the House of the Dead remake a 6.2 out of 10. If one day it's playable with light gun support, I could imagine to amp it up to 8 out of 10. If you want to know more about the Synth light gun, I put a link in the description as well. Check it out. It's worth it. But you will never, ever defeat me. Say hello to my masterpiece. If you enjoyed our House of the Dead remake review, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and tell us in the comments what's your favorite House of the Dead game. Or maybe the movie. I don't know. I don't think so. See you in the next video.